Travis Wayne Goodsell. Though I often go to my channel because I'm uploading a video, I rarely watch my videos. And I am aware, because I have watched many over the years, that I do make errors and, uh, and I have to go on to tangents to explain information because inevitably there's going to be some person who comes to the one video and if I don't say the information they will then make a dumbass comment. Nonetheless, I watched this morning's video. Not only did I switch the eyes, right eye, left eye, as I also forgot to talk about Legion, <clears throat> because that was the comparison I was intending to make before I got sidetracked to explain Constantine. It's the one thing all Mormons should know, especially in the day of Google search, and yet not a single Mormon actually studies their scriptures anymore. The prophets have done well in blinding the minds of the Mormons. and. Uh, so the Exodus, we'll start with that, explain, again, Moses goes to Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses says no, creeping death of Metallica comes in and kills Pharaoh's firstborn. The sole corporation is destroyed, there's no heir to the throne, it's over and done with. I was reading over that trying to find out what would happen under such circumstances because this is kind of important for our eternal salvation <laughs> and <laughs> I'm uh, going to I'm looking for the particular picture that I'm trying to refer to here <clears throat> while talking at the same time and so, uh, with the death of the dynasty, uh, Moses goes and parts the waters of the Reed Sea. There it is. Excellent. Didn't have to search long. It's the small version. God. Uh, so I'll have to find the larger versions I have. Otherwise, it'll be very blurry. <clears throat> and uh, in the course of leaving, Pharaoh decides, you know what? I want them back as slaves. So he sends out his army, and depending on which version of the movie you prefer, whether it's the original Ten Commandments, or whether it's the Prince of Egypt cartoon, or Christian Bale as Moses in Exodus, Gods and Kings, which is the one I recommend for more cultural historical accuracy. Uh, not biblical, literal history. There's no such thing. Constantine made it literal history. <clears throat> Before I get sidetracked on that again, with people saying, the Bible's literal history like the Book of Mormon is literal history. They're not apocalyptic literature like the Book of Revelation. And so the waters close in on Pharaoh and his army. They die in the sea. Okay? And then hap and Moses and the house of Israel live happily ever after. Millennial reign of bees, right? <clears throat> well, archaeologists in Egypt have found the, the tomb of the kings, and they found the area for the 19th dynasty, the Set Dynasty, who murdered his brother Osiris and usurped the throne, and so they named themselves the Set Dynasty for that own, that very purpose, because the previous dynasty, the 18th Dynasty, was the David Moseses, the restoration of the Osirian origins, as uh, the Hyksos. 17th and eight, uh, 16th and 17th dynasties uh, collectively uh, 
utilize set as well. So they are well aware of their own stories and purposely enact them into real life. And, uh, and so that's where the Smiths come from with Revelation chapter 12 verse 1, the Joseph Smith translation edition of likeness of things on the earth. The Egyptians practiced that. They knew of the movements of the heavens, they knew of the constellations and the conjunctions within them, told their stories all based on this, and so when certain events occurred, they knew they were forced to comply. Even the Assyrians, the old Assyrians, have a story about going to battle way out in the east uh, against a, a rival country to do battle in their land and uh, the Assyrian king consulted his uh, magi, his priests, and uh, they said, oh, we're looking at the star charts, everything looks great, you go right ahead and conquer, God will be with you, until we meet again. And so he goes out, way out into the east, to do battle, and in the midst of the battle, a total solar eclipse occurs. <laughs> the king is freaked. <laughs> He's pissed with his priests <laughs> and murders them. <laughs> and so the new priests <laughs> are like, uh, oh, I, we understand now. Our star charts over our land were perfectly fine. It's this land and this king who's supposed to die. <laughs> but that was after the priest tried to save their lives by saying, Hey, your majesty, don't kill us yet. We got an idea. Let's get a regular peasant to stand in as king for a day and we'll murder him. And your guys... <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So yes, the the concept of different places on the earth having different places for uh, solar and even lunar eclipses, even though lunar eclipses have a wider range on Earth than a solar eclipse does. Uh, that was known to them, despite those that one set of priests. The Egyptians knew it, as I discuss in that other video. <coughs> so, taking the sidetrack, I have the picture on the screen, I will not forget it this time. And so, Moses, Pharaoh. You have the the, the sea, the parting of the sea, and Moses goes through into paradise, Garden of Eden, Zion, etc. Pharaoh dies, just like his son dies. And, uh, and so the dynasty is completely and utterly destroyed. A whole new dynasty is required, and that author turned it into Moses. <coughs> as a restoration of the David Moses dynasty as the Hollywood liberties suggest. They claim that Moses was part of the 18th dynasty and that he was old enough to go up against the 19th dynasty pharaohs. Ramses II is the most popular one that completely wrong. Don't make it literal history. <coughs> and uh, restores the dynasty, but we know from literal history that's not the case. And so therefore, Moses is not real. If you're going to try to do it, you have to throw away science. And religious people do want to throw away science and teach the Bible as the actual history of the world. Heaven forbid that should happen. 
but they're doing very well and overthrowing our school systems and our government to get their religious freedom to destroy everybody else, destroy truth and knowledge. <clears throat> so in these tombs of the uh, 19th dynasty pharaohs, and it's in multiple ones, uh, they have Setis and they have Ramses uh, that are involved, and uh, uh, Ramses Ra Moses, Ra son Moses, born of the sun. Seti Set, who murdered Osiris. <coughs> so they're the ones sitting on the throne. And depending on which tomb it is, gets the different name in the cartouche above. Or it looks like right off to the side of the shepherd's crook that Pharaoh was holding in his, his hand there. And you see a long lineup of people walking up the stairs. They're being judged. And apparently somebody's wanting to knock on my door and interrupt my video. And I don't want to answer. There's no reason for anybody to answer. They won. And uh, you see that there's a, a solar bark, a ship. It's flying in outer space. And uh, it's got a uh, baboon. They're not going to leave me alone. Pisses me off. The state of Utah is a criminal organization state led by the biggest, longest running criminal organization the world has ever known. And I checked out on that today, too, just to make sure. They win, and they still won't leave me alone. you think that they won, so they'd leave me alone until I'm gone. Nope. They hacked my computer through the WebEx, tamper with all my programs and apps. God. So, pigs in space. The Muppets, literally. <clears throat> I don't know if that's where they got it from. Nonetheless, you have a, uh, a swine in space with baboons escorting it back into the netherworld. The person failed his judgment, turned into a swine, and went back to the spirit world. Okay. Probably should have had the scripture up. We'll do uh, Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs the zombie man and no man could bind him no not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. <coughs> and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? 
Well, that would be Son Amun, not Jesus. The Most High, the Son at Noonday, Amun. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains. I saw in the news today that uh, a, uh, a temple to Zeus was found in northern Sinai. Cool. <clears throat> a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Isn't that nice? And the unclean spirits went out, and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. You made the connection yet? And they that fed the swine told it in the city and in the country, He destroyed our business! <laughs> we can't make money to live! That Jesus guy, kill him! And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid oh no he's saying he's going to reveal all our sacred secrets kill him and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning this one D.M. Murdoch was the first one to make this connection to the Egyptian documents I'm the one who has just now told you that it is the Exodus story in the Gospels. I think that's because uh, it's not in Matthew. Uh, it is in Luke. No, just Mark and Luke. Not Matthew, not John. Whoops. And so, with the Exodus story, Moses passes his judgment, enters into the Holy of Holies, the Promised Land. Pharaoh loses his judgment, loses his kingdom, crown king nothing, drowns in the sea, which is spirit, prison in Mormon understanding. Lost his exaltation. He is destroyed. The great and abominable church gone from the face of the earth. And Brigham Young set it up before the fall. That's, that's too bad. Should have stuck to what Joseph Smith had and the church could continue for eternity. But Nope. Brigham Young had to change it to allow everybody to believe that he's supposed to be the successor. Oops! And then the church went and ruined it even further when a certain person sent the presidency of the CES, or uh, the 70, presidency of the 70, a letter, not the CES letter, not the letter to the IRS, it was a letter to the presidency of the 70, in which the Wikipedia page was then changed soon thereafter to say, hypothetically, if all the apostles are gone, the 70 would take over? No, sorry, not in the Articles of Incorporation. 
too bad, so sad. <clears throat> it would have to be given by a judge to a charity of his choosing, I guess. Because uh, unless they laundered the money already, which the Australian lawsuit, potential lawsuit, uh, suggests that they are in fact doing this, laundering money into offshore accounts so that uh, the actual assets claimed for the United States would be minimal in comparison. So, yeah, you'd just be sitting there eternally, collecting interest, and then it would be uh, prey for those who know how to hack com computer systems and the particular offshore bank accounts to seize the money and who's going to come after them. <laughs> the money is drowned in the sea of the exodus of the netherworld. Good segue. I like that. <laughs>